Hi, I'm Fred Stevie here at the Analytical Instrumentation Facility at NC State University. We're going to guide you through the steps of how to refurbish a scroll pump where we need to replace the tip seals. And in terms of what you need, the parts required, you'll need the tip seal replacement kit, some four and six millimeter Allen wrenches, a 716 dowel rod, side cutters, torque wrench, some uh, a flathead screwdriver, some cleaning supplies, a vacuum tester, and above all, you need some patience. So the first step is to turn off the pump and remove the power cord. You can then replace the pump, place the pump on top of a table or other elevated surface that will make it more comfortable for you to work. If the pump has uh, just been turned off, it may be a little hot to the touch. So now we're going to remove the exhaust cap. Now there are three M8 bolts, which we remove with a six millimeter Allen wrench. That's the front cowling. Once that's removed, you'll see that there is a power connector to the fan. And if you squeeze the clips, you can remove that and that removes the cowling completely. Next is the housing removal. There are four M5 bolts and you remove these with a four millimeter Allen wrench. Once again, if the pump is hot, sometimes this will not, this housing with the fixed part of the scroll will not come off very easily. And these are on fairly tight. They're put on with a torque wrench. So you may have to take that Allen key and to get it started, to use the short end to loosen it. So now we're using a screwdriver and there are a couple of slots, one on each side, to help loosen that cowling. Just twisting the screwdriver in a little bit. If it comes free a little bit, then you're probably going to be able to take it off. So we're wiggling a little bit there. There it's coming free. Great, and now you see there is the cowling removed See all that material in there? Those are from the Teflon tip seals. So we're gonna to have to clean all that out, remove the tip seals. So here we're starting to remove from the fixed part of the scroll pump. We're removing this tip seal. <coughs> and now if we go to the very end of it, there's a little gap there. You can take a um, wooden swab and start it and then just pull this out and remove the whole tip seal. Now you see there's all this residue in there so we need to remove that and you can see if we move the end of this wooden swab inside that track that there's some sticky material. We also have to get all of this stuff out at the bottom that you see there because that's where the tip seal actually seats. Now you see some of the buildup there. That's the uh, residue of the sticky part of the tip seal. And then you can move a lot of that uh, fairly easily by hand. Just pushing it through in the track with the wood. You don't want to use anything that will scratch 
the tip seal groove. Also removing the O-ring, which you can see right there. There's one that comes with the kit, and we're going to get rid of that one. And we're working on the other one. This is the fixed part. And also loosening up all the stuff that's in between the, the, the grooves. You can see this sticky material can be difficult to remove. And we're working our way through the rest of it here. You notice even though they're working quickly, at no time do their fingers leave their hands. And you notice it's pretty sticky, so you see that the uh, wood swab is breaking when we're trying to pull all this out. Now the next step we're going to do here is um, to get these tracks much cleaner. You can see we're using a Kim wipe on that wooden swab. And that's helping to get it clear. But if we flood some methanol into those tracks, and you see it filling up all the tracks, now if you take a wooden swab and a little Kim wipe and work your way through them, you'll get these really clean. And that just is enough. So here we are to see flooding the whole set just by squeezing some methanol into it. And now we're taking this wipe and using the wood dowel and working our way through the entire, in a continuous motion is the idea, uh, all the way through the track where the tip seal sets. So you want to get this totally clean, no residue left in there. Otherwise, when the tip seal, the new tip seal is put in, it won't all be level all the way through. And having a, a, that distance between the tip seals is, uh, is, a, is a very precise value. So now we're gonna get the area in between. Uh, so once this one is clean and that one, we've got both parts of the scroll. So now we're using uh, some wipes to clean off this area, which is between the tip seal areas. That channel also has to be very clean. You can blow it out with nitrogen, but that won't take all of it out. Here you see on this one we're doing final check on the channels for the tip seal. So here we are cleaning the areas in between. Again, the other tip seal rests and touches those regions. Now to get this better, we're using a dowel rod, a 17 inch dowel rod with the uh, wipes, it just fits right in there. So once you've got most of that material out, you can take a motion Once you've done that and you're satisfied that this is clean also, there 
you see, we're getting the walls much cleaner. And now we're able to easily move all the way through and it looks pretty clean. So we're blowing it off with nitrogen here and you can see all this dust. The dust is actually little bits of Teflon and especially this part because some of the dust is down inside. You can see that being blown out now. And we're using nitrogen from a nitrogen cylinder. Just a final check there, making sure everything's clean. And using the same methanol with the dowel rod to help make sure that's really clean. We build up nitrogen rather than compressed air from the building. That uh, those compressors are made with oil tend to have oil in them, and you may leave a residue in it. This is a oil-free pump and you want to keep it that way. Some little touch-ups with spots that we see, it's like having your teeth clean. Now there are the new tip seals. And the new o-ring. If you have a chance, someone should start stretching that O-ring right away. That is a difficult part of this procedure. You see what we're doing right there, just continuing to rub it and pull on it. It warms it up a little bit and stretches it a little bit. There's your tip seal. And there's a part there we're going to discard. One other part to discard. And now we have the tip seal, which is a um, has this hook at the end and then it's a continuous strand. So you have to start with this one. You see it's configured to match that. The idea is that you press this down in and work it all the way, work it around as you go, making sure it's all nice and tight within that groove. When you've gone all the way around, leave about three millimeters or less. It doesn't come all the way to the end. Don't need to do that. And then cut it. So now you can see the tip seal is complete. While we're setting that one there, we'll put some weights on it just so it doesn't tend to rise. Now we're going to the other one. The start's pretty difficult because it's a tight turn and it's got to get in there. And now we're working our way through. And you can see there's a little gap at the start, so we're going to have to go back and fix that. So we're working our way through on this other portion of the scroll pump. And once again, it must be in tight and in flat, which means you continually kind of work your way around the whole piece of the tip seal. And you can see on this one, when we reach the end, we see that we've got a gap right at the beginning and we've got to fix that. So we, before we cut it off, we really want to make sure that that is in there all the way. And so um, you actually have to, if that happens, you just lift it up and then start it over. So now we've got this tight and in all the way. And cut off at the very end with a couple millimeters left. So now putting on the O-ring. If you put this on and just try and let go, it'll just normally just pop off. We worked on it to make it a little uh, warmer, but now by putting your fingers on it and then twisting it while it's down there, 
twisting it back and forth, you can often get it to seal. So it's a little tricky. This is where you need some patience. So you spread your fingers wide on the O-rings and rotate it on the frame. That will help it stay in place. Now we can put the other portion on while that O-ring is still there, making sure it's aligned properly. You can see it'll only go on one way. So we're gonna put this housing back on top of the frame, making sure the guide pins are aligned. So we install the piece on there, push down, and now we're gonna put the four frame bolts on and tighten them snugly, but not all the way. This is with your four millimeter Allen wrench. So now they're on there. Now to tighten them thoroughly and completely to get the tip seals the right distance, we use a torque wrench. And this torque wrench is applying four newton meters. So it's set to four newton meters. And we're going to tighten each one of these using the torque wrench. Alternate the sides first. So go one side, then the other side. And then the remaining two. So now we're doing well here. We've got this housing back on. We've got and checked the torque wrench to make sure it's tight evenly all around. So tip seals now should be evenly mated. And that's the really important part of this procedure. Now we're gonna put the cowling back on so we have to connect the fan power. Click. And then we'll set this cowling back on and put in these other bolts, which require, these don't have to be all that superhumanly tight it's just holding the cowling and that's your six millimeter allen wrench and there we're replacing the exhaust cover the flange adapter now i've got this completed we're going to test it so we're putting on a little tester here the key part of this is to have a thermocouple gauge capability on it so we're putting on with these uh, quick connects making sure the valve for venting is closed. And now we turned it on and it's pumping down. You see it's going quickly in the 10 to the minus one tour range. And it helps to open the vent valve a couple of times. That allows the pressure to increase and makes it work a little bit. It makes the seals seem to heat a little bit better. So we're just gonna do that a few times. And we're gonna make a note on here and set up and tape it to this pump, indicating when we change this and what the pressure was. See it's going down and it continues to go down. Now maybe you're gonna wait 10 minutes or even 15 minutes till it kind of reaches an equilibrium point. We're gonna again write down the data and the pressure achieved so anybody who picks this up knows that it's good. And we're gonna reach an ultimate pressure here um, which is uh, below five times 10 to the minus two. Anything below five times 10 to the minus two is really pretty good. A scroll pump will not get to 10 to the minus three. This, these readings are all in tour. So you see it's still dropping, and that's good. actually down in the four times 10 to the minus two range. And it looks like we're actually gonna get below into the 10 to the minus, and the three times 10 to the minus two range. And that's a very good see. So this way we've tested the pump. You really wanna do this to make sure nothing has gone wrong. You can also tell if the pump was really noisy or something, then something has gone wrong, or maybe the pump has actually uh, pretty much died. So we're reaching 3.5 times 10 to the minus two. 